Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing, an initial thoughts review of the one of the new range of telescopes by Skywatcher, which is the StarQuest range. There's three in the range. This one's an 130mm parabolic Newtonian at f5 with a focal length of 650mm, but there's also an f4.9 refractor, an achromatic refractor, and a 4 inch or 102mm f12.7 Maxitov telescope. So we've got the largest aperture telescope here, which is 130 millimeters, and it comes on this new mount, which is a replacement for the, it seems to be a replacement for the EQ1, and by all accounts, it is a little bit more sturdy, but we'll, we'll take a look and see what we think about that. But before we get going, I'd like to thank First Light Optics for loaning me this telescope to review, and I'll provide links to them down below. Just uh, pop the rings off just to remove the, the paper. There's a camera mount there for attaching a something like a DSLR for piggybacking. If you want to do some wide field astrophotography or anything, which I know before you before you say anything that they are doing a, a motor drive for this, I found out, and I think I think Flow, First Light Optics are going to send me one of those to attach to it, so there'll be more on that later. And we'll see how it tracks. Now this is a bit of a new livery for Skywatcher because they usually do what's called the Black Diamond range and that is kind of black with silver flecks and what they've done now is they've gone with with some of the telescopes have gone for this lovely it's lovely it's really nice it's a it's a white with um slight green accents which really looks i mean you can't be a, a white telescope really it just looks really scientific and proper just cap off we'll have a look inside it's very dark so they've done a good job with sort of reflections, there's nothing other than the um, the rack and pinion focuser tube. But if you rack in, you can see a bit of silver there. Other than that, it's, it's very dark. And you've just got three screws there on the back of the secondary mirror for just in the secondary if you ever need to. So if I read the back of this, it says the primary mirror is always collimated in the factory before shipping and that's the thing with these new entry-level scopes by S Skywatcher is that they've gone for a more sort of easy less worrisome thing for beginners where they're not having adjustment screws for the primary which is what you get traditionally you get adjustments to adjust the secondary mirror at the top and three screws usually at the back for tilting the the primary mirror to line up the optics it's called collimation so this hasn't got any of that, it's factory set, we shouldn't have to worry about it. In my experience I've had a couple of others that are similar to this with this kind of fixed non-collimatable cell and they've been fine. I was a bit worried before I got them but they, they proved to be really good so we'll, I'll check it under the stars but that's not for today's video. Anyway let's carry on. So I've placed the, the rings and the dovetail back on. I always put the dovetail opposite the focuser and you'll, you'll see why if you ever use a, a Newtonian on an equatorial mount. This allows that whatever position you swing it to, you can always get to the focuser. Some people have it at an angle, but then you can you come unstuck on one side of the sky. If you have it in the middle, if it's anything up to a six inch, it's actually really quite easy to use. And histor historically, these are quite difficult things to use on an equatorial mount for visual, where you're trying to get to an eyepiece. So top tip is to keep the focuser opposite the dovetail. As you can see, it's as well as the white livery, which looks very nice, it's got the green accent continued to the dovetail bar in anodized green. Right, so I'll put the optical tube down and we'll, we'll take a, a look at the rest. So 
Here we have the tripod. So that, you can set that up quite tall. I mean, I'm I'm five eleven, and it's its highest height. It's up to it's kind of up to my chest. And you can imagine if you've got like the mount on top of that and the optical tube. That's, that's very high indeed. So I can't imagine any problem with this with really tall people using this telescope. There's no bubble level anywhere on the mount that I can see on the tripod, but I'll have a look on the mount in a moment. There might be one on there. They're, they're quite handy for levelling everything out. Right. Just thumb screws to undo and do up the legs. They don't feel like they could take an enormous amount of abuse, but this whole thing is a budget product, so it I wouldn't really expect it to spread a tray. And that's for popping accessories on and it just firms up the whole tripod and makes it a little bit stiffer, less prone to vibrations while you are serving or imaging or whatever. So you attach that via three wing nuts onto here. Grab a wing nut. Coincidentally that used to be my nickname because my ears stick out. So that's the spreader plate on, and then you can use that for placing IPs, IPs, <laughs> eyepieces, red light torch, things like that. You can fit them there. Right, let's grab another box and see what else we've got. Structure manual. rather lovely doesn't it? Have a look at that. So this is the mount head for this telescope. It looks very well engineered. It's actually, I thought it might be plastic but it's metal. It's got lovely accents in the green for the setting circles for declination and right ascension. Uh, they're bringing out a motor that you can attach to here as well so you can track the sky. Let's pop it on. Here in England, I'm going to set to roughly 52 degrees. It's just a big Tommy bar to undo this side. I'll turn it around to show you that. So it's just this Tommy bar here. And then I can use this one here to adjust the angle. There's no major increment line for 50 and I'm at 52 degrees. So that's going to be a little tricky. So each one's going to be free. So 45, 48, 48, 51, it's going to be about there. Anyway, so let's lock that up with this Tommy bar here. So I'm undoing the clutches now just to get a feel of what, how smoothly it moves with them undone. Yeah, there's, there's friction on there, but you can turn it. It all feels lovely and solid. I think this is a very good, immediately, I think this is a very good replacement for the EQ1 or EQ2 even. Let's get some else open. I think it might only be this box that's got stuff in it left. Very typically for Skywatcher telescopes, you get these two modified Acromat eyepieces. One's a 10mm Super 10 and the other one's a Super 25mm. So these give 26 and 65 times magnification at 650mm focal length. We've got some slow motion controls which I'll try and pop on now because I've not got a motor to attach to this yet. Although as, as I mentioned, First Light Optics are very kindly likely going to send me one so it's really it was one of my first questions when I first sort of asked about this 
does it come with a will it will they be bringing out a motor uh, motor drive for it because it, it you know it's one of the it's one of the big advantages of a equatorial mount that you can use it to track the sky automatically so i mean otherwise you'd just get a Altaz type mount where it just goes up down left right you know it's much better to, i think it's personally much better to have a motor drive doing the the tracking for you rather than aligning it and then slowly turning one of the axis it's just easier you can you can share your experiences more easily with other people you don't need to sort of like line it up on one side of the eyepiece and then quickly get someone in as it drifts across and get them turning quickly you can just leave it for an hour have a cup of tea if it's a good if it's aligned properly it should track nicely and when you come back to it it'll still be tracking on the target that's the theory anyway let me show you those from the front now there we go so they're in a position that's really easy to use just out to the side so that there's nothing else for it really let's put the optical tube on Hello again, I was a bit of a headless uh, creature for a while there. Now, has this got a counterweight bar? That's an interesting thing really, does it? I mean, because usually you'd have a counterweight bar. Has it got a hole for a counterweight? Yeah, there is. There's a hole just there for a counterweight bar, so there must be... Yeah, here we go. So what you, what you want to do is you want to balance out the weight of this optical tube with a weight. So when you're turning, it's all turning around a common centre of mass. I think, I think that's the correct physics, I'm not sure. So that means there must be a little weight somewhere. Oh. <laughs> yeah, all the other boxes were extremely light and then I came to this one. There's definitely a weight in there. A squeaky one with all that polystyrene as well. It's either a weight or a gang of angry mice. There we go. So this offsets the, the weight of the optical tube. But on the end of here you've got like a, a washer and a Phillips head screw and that's just in case the, uh, the screw here fails and the weight slips down it's not going to fall on your foot it'll get caught by the washer there. So what we want to do is we want to move this weight up and down the bar until it matches the weight of the optical tube in terms of balance. So if we undo that clutch, as you can see, we can go sideways like that. And we want to move that along until it sits lovely and balanced. Now, this has got a little bit of friction on it, so you're not going to get the balance super correct because it's held in place partly by the friction, which isn't a bad thing, because obviously you can move it quite freely still and quite smoothly. It kind of just means that the balance isn't as critical as it may be if it had like proper roller bearings in and a more sort of high-end mount. And actually, if you move the weight all the way down the bottom, the friction is such that it still kind of balances there and it still kind of balances, oh no it doesn't, it kind of balances sort of halfway up. So really, well, it's starting to go a bit that way. I can balance this probably about there. Between the end and halfway seems to be a good place to have it. I mean that brings me on to the next thing with this. Looking at the design, looks like you can put this vertical and not only have an equatorial mount, but also have an altazimuth mount. So let's give that a go. That's, uh... let's just 
just undo this Tommy bar again to free it up. And then I'll crank that round to 90 degrees. And hopefully we've got an altazimuth telescope. As well as an equatorial telescope. I mean, if this works like I think it's going to, that's a really big advantage for this mount head because you don't need to buy two lightweight mounts, one, one EQ mount to track in the sky and one altazimuth mount which is just easier to use just going if you want to just quickly look around the sky going up and down and left and right because this will, by the looks of it, this will fulfil both roles. Oh yes, that is a true altazimuth mount now. You can turn the optical tube that up there. You can turn the optical tube in the rings and then you can just observe like so and then just move it left and right and then up and down. Simple. I'm going back to 52 degrees with the altitude and tighten the Tommy bar and then that's all set. We can Swing that back round into an EQ position, and if I tighten the clutches, we'll see how stable that is. But moulding onto the tripod with one arm, because I'm on carpet, which is not realistic of being. I guess it's similar to being on grass outside, but I just want to feel how sturdy this head is, and that is because it's so squat and not spindly like the EQ one. The EQ one's got like a really thin bit of metal. This is all quite squat and dense. It's it's quite it's quite sturdy. I mean, it's rated up to three kilograms, but yeah, I mean, you might be able to go slightly north of that and get away with it. Maybe feels good. I'm really impressed with it. <laughs> I like it. I'm pleased to see this comes with a RDF, a red dot finder. So what these have is it will have a battery in there and then to activate the battery you just pull out this little tab there and then we should be able to turn it on with that little dial there I just wonder if I can show you this you see that you see that little red dot and you can adjust the position of that red dot using that wheel there and this wheel at the back there you just line up the red dot finder with the main telescope by using it in the daytime not looking anywhere near the sun by the way you know that but point it at like a tv aerial on the roof and then you with the main telescope and then you basically adjust the red dot finder until it's pointed at the same thing and then you're all set to go at night time i think one more thing that I've, I've noticed about this compared to other entry level telescopes in this price range is that it does have a proper dovetail and not the rings going directly onto the mount. Having a, a dedicated dovetail means you can take this telescope optical tube off and place it on another mount and also means because you've got the puck on the mount for a dovetail it also means you can use other optical tubes with a dovetail on this mount so it works both ways so it's just more hand like that just works both ways it's just handier to have really and it's a lot less hassle it's a lot quicker changing the telescope because as you can see I can just undo that and take it off really quickly but if the rings attached directly to the mount you'd be undoing two screws underneath the mount there I'll try and I forgot to mention as well as balancing on the axis we did, you also need to balance the tube as well. But because there's so much friction, it, it's not that critical really. But yeah. I'm looking forward to getting the motor drive and putting that on and see how, how that works. And getting this out under the stars and we'll, we'll take a look and see what it can do. Okay, thanks very much for joining me for this unboxing and initial thoughts of the Skywatcher StarQuest 130p Newtonian reflector on the new equatorial mount. I've 
my my summary is I'm I'm very impressed with it. I report back more once I've got it out under the stars, but I can tell straight away it's going to be good. I'm not going to have any worries because it's a manual telescope. It's not a go-to telescope. I don't need to worry about any worries about alignment issues or anything. It's just simply going to do the job. I'm going to be able to point it at an object. It's going to work. I can either use it as an equatorial mount and track using one of the slow motion controls or just using the right ascension motor that, that you can buy for this for about £50, $50 or I can put it into an altazimuth mode and just simply go up and down and left and right and look at what I want with ease. Uh, the mount is sturdier than I thought it was going to be, it's got a lot more metal than I thought it would I thought it was plastic initially when I looked at the pictures for this before it arrived and very pleasantly surprised by the weight and the sturdiness of the mount head itself. You could probably, in fact, if you upgraded the tripod, this could be actually quite a sturdy little mount indeed. More than enough for carrying this telescope. I'm going to report back to you guys and let you know what this is like when I get out under the stars. Hopefully I have some images to show you as well with my modified webcam. So if you want to follow along the channel where I, I do do quite a lot of reviews of entry level telescopes, feel free to hit that subscribe button or that notification bell so you get notified when I post a video. Thanks very much and I'll hopefully catch you on the next video.